Hey, what's going on people? I hope you guys are doing good. Today we're going to be talking about the battery on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. I've gotten a lot of questions about how I'm able to get such good battery life on my phone and I'm going to share with you several tips and tricks to help you get the most battery life out of this device. There's a lot here. Grab some popcorn, get a drink, and let's talk about the battery life on the S22 Ultra. The first tip that I have for you is to use black wallpapers, but not just regular black wallpapers. Use black OLED wallpapers. The reason being is that the S22 Ultra uses an AMOLED display, which means that the blacks are actually pixels not being used. That part of the display is technically turned off. So if you're not powering the full display, of course, you're going to save battery life. The next tip that I have for you is to make sure you enable dark mode. You could do this by going into the display settings and then toggling on dark. The other tip that I have for you to go with this is to go into the Samsung theme store and download an AMOLED black theme. Once you apply that, it will make sure the things that dark mode doesn't cover become black. So when it comes to dark mode, sometimes dark mode isn't applied to apps. So you have to go into the settings and manually toggle on the dark mode for some apps such as Twitter. However, there's other apps such as the Disney World app where there's no type of dark mode inside the settings. So you have to force dark mode and you can do that by going into the developer settings. Let me show you. Let me give you an example. So if I go into the Disney World app here, you can see it is definitely not in dark mode. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into our settings. We're gonna scroll all the way down, then go under about phone, tap on software information, and then keep tapping build number until it says that you need to enter your pin. And then now developer mode has been turned on. So we're gonna go back to the main settings page, scroll down a little bit further, go into developer options. Then you're gonna scroll all the way down and you're gonna go under hardware accelerated and rendering. You're gonna to toggle on force dark mode. So toggle that on. Now when I go back to the Disney app, I'm going to force close it and then relaunch it. Give it a minute and look. Now we have dark mode. So that's how you can force dark mode on apps that don't support it. Another thing you can do when it comes to the display is tweak your always on display settings. Because if you leave it on all the time, having that information just constantly on your display is of course gonna drain your battery. What you can do is go under your lock screen settings and then tap on always on display and change it from show always to tap the show or show as scheduled or even show for new notifications only. Or if you don't use the always on display at all, just toggle it off because it will help with your battery life. If you live in an area where you don't receive 5G service, then disabling 5G might be beneficial to you, especially because you're turning off the 5G antenna so it's no longer wasting battery searching for that signal. What you're gonna do is go into your main settings, then you're gonna go under connections, then tap on mobile networks, and then tap on network mode, and then tap where it says LTE 3G and 2G. Now the 5G modem has been disabled. Now, one thing I do have to add here is that depending on the carrier you have your phone with, like if you purchase your phone through Verizon or AT&T, or maybe you have a phone in a different country, you may not have this option in your settings. But if you have an unlock model, or if you have a T-Mobile model, I know for sure that it is within those settings. The Galaxy S22 Ultra has a beautiful display. The Quad HD Plus resolution and 120 Hertz refresh rate is great for playing games and consuming content, but it does drain the battery faster than using Full HD Plus and 60 Hertz. So if you wanna save some battery, you can go into your settings, go under display, go under motion smoothness, dial it back to standard, which is gonna be capped at 60 Hertz, tap apply, then go under screen resolution and toggle on Full HD Plus. This will decrease the resolution and the display won't seem as snappy, but if you're in a pinch and you wanna save some battery, this is a good way to do it. If your battery is getting low, you could always put your phone in power saving mode. I know it sounds a little silly, but some people forget that the Galaxy S22 Ultra has a really good power saving mode. So you can go into your quick toggles, make sure that it's on your first page, and then just toggle it on. And if you wanna customize the experience, you can tap where it says power saving, the words, and then tap details and you can customize the experience so that way whenever you toggle it on, it's to your liking. So you can toggle on and off, turn off always on display, you can limit CPU speed, decrease brightness, and also limit apps and home screen. Another tip or trick that I have for you is to put your apps to sleep or deep sleep, depending on your usage patterns. This will prevent apps from running too much in the background, thus causing battery drain. What you're gonna do is go into your settings, 
Go under battery and device care, tap on battery, then tap on background usage limits. Starting with sleeping apps, you can tap the plus symbol in the top right and then pick the sleeping apps that you want. So for instance, if I wanted to put Deathworm as a sleeping app, I could select it and then tap add and now it's been added into sleeping apps. Sleeping apps are only gonna run in the background occasionally. They'll still receive notifications and updates, but they might be delayed. So just keep that in mind. Now, if we back up and go under deep sleeping apps, these apps will not run in the background. So they will not drain your battery whatsoever, but they also won't receive any updates or notifications. So keep that in mind when you're assigning um, apps to deep sleep. And you can do the same thing, just tap the plus symbol and then pick the apps that you want to put to deep sleep. Depending on the Galaxy S22 Ultra that you have and where you purchased it, you might have a lot of bloatware on your phone. So if you purchased it from Verizon, I know Verizon tends to tack on a ton of bloatware on their phones and that bloatware can cause battery drain. However, you can uninstall and disable bloatware that you're never gonna use. So for instance, if I go into my Samsung folder, let's say I want to completely disable or remove Bixby. I can touch and hold on it, then tap the little I, and then I can tap disable down here on the bottom. Sometimes you can even uninstall bloatware. So let me find an app where I can uninstall. So if I go into pin up and then tap the little I, I can actually uninstall it. So instead of disabling it, I can completely remove it from my phone. You can do this for a lot of carrier bloatware, um, depending on the app and the bloatware that's installed. And a lot of the times, if you can't uninstall it, you can definitely disable it. And this will help with your battery life. Obviously something like Bluetooth is gonna drain your battery if you leave it on because it's constantly searching for a connection or maintaining a connection with a specific device. If you don't have any devices connected to your phone or you're not planning on connecting your phone to a specific device, you can toggle off Bluetooth and that will save some battery. However, there's another feature inside of the settings called nearby device scanning. This is on always even if you toggle off Bluetooth. So if you want to disable this setting, go into your settings, go under connections, tap on more connection settings, and then toggle off nearby device scanning. This will make sure that your phone is not constantly searching for a connection to something like your Galaxy Buds or your Samsung TV. Now don't get me wrong, if you have a connection already in your phone for that specific device, such as if you paired your Galaxy Buds to your Galaxy S22 Ultra in the past and it's already connected, even if you toggle this off, it will still maintain that connection. So that's not gonna interfere with anything. This is just scanning for devices that you haven't previously connected to. And then it's gonna give you like a pop-up saying that you can connect to that device. I honestly never use this. So toggling it off might help a little bit when it comes to your battery life. I'm not a huge fan of Bixby, but Bixby routines are very powerful when it comes to automation. And you can use these routines to fully automate your phone and get better battery life. Let me show you. First and foremost, if you wanna to get to Bixby routines quickly, you can go into your quick toggles and then add that button by tapping on the three little dots in the top right, tap on edit buttons, and then just drag that toggle down to your quick toggle menu. I've already added mine, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to it. And if I tap where it says Bixby routines and then tap details, it will pull up all the information that I need on Bixby routines. You have some presets here, including save battery at night, which is perfect in case you forget to charge your phone, it will automatically put your battery in power saving mode. So that way when you wake up, it's still charged, at least enough for you to plug it in and check your notifications. You can also go to add routine and then create your own. So I created my own under my routines, it's called work life. And you can see if at 8 a.m. through 5 p.m. every weekday, power saving mode will be turned on. This means that if I were to work from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., my phone's automatically gonna be in power saving mode so I can still get my notifications, my calls, texts, and things like that. But in terms of extra power consumption, it's just not going to be happening since it's in power saving mode, which is great because most people at work don't have time to be on their phones all the time anyways. You can create multiple routines for saving battery life. So if I back up and then go under add routine and then tap if, I can create a location specific routine. So if I reach a certain place, it will automatically put my phone in power saving mode, or I can have it turn off Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, cellular, so on and so forth. So we'll say at um, bedtime or before bed, I can then turn off multiple connections, or I can put my phone in power saving mode. I can decrease the processing speed. There's a lot of things that I can do 
when it comes to fully automating my phone to get the best battery life. And depending on the routine or routines that you're using, this can have a significant effect on improving your battery life. Speaking of automation, there's a few tasks that you can run that have nothing to do with Bixby routines. These are found inside of your main settings and then under battery and device care, tap on the three little dots in the top right and then tap on automation. Now you have three settings in here that are not only going to improve your battery life, but also your phone's performance. The first of which is auto optimize daily. So if I tap on that, I can toggle it on. I can assign a time where I'm not gonna be using my phone since that's what's best if you want to optimize your phone daily. And you can also toggle on close apps to free up memory. So when it optimizes your phone, it's also going to close any apps in the background to give you better RAM performance. So ideally, this is best used whenever you're sleeping or just not using your phone. So maybe if you're at work. Right below auto optimize daily is the next setting that I wanna talk about, which is auto restart at set times. If I tap on that and then toggle it on, I can select the days and time that I want my phone to automatically restart. Restarting the phone once or twice a week is probably ideal. What happens is it completely refreshes your phone by closing down background apps and fixing any bugs that might be occurring it's gonna be really good for the performance of the phone and it might have a slight impact on your battery life. So setting this up could be, you know, a uh, beneficial thing. The last automation task that I wanna talk about is adaptive power saving. It's right below auto restart at set times. If I toggle it on, the Galaxy S22 Ultra will learn my usage patterns and then it's automatically going to turn on power saving mode as it sees fit. So this is great for people that don't want to manually toggle on and off power saving mode. Speaking of learning your usage patterns, the Galaxy S22 Ultra has a similar feature to adaptive power saving called adaptive battery. What you're gonna do is go into your settings, tap on battery and device care, tap on battery, scroll down, tap on more battery settings, and make sure adaptive battery is toggled on. This is gonna learn your usage patterns over time and then adjust the processing speed and things like that in order to give you the best battery life possible. It's recommended that you toggle this on as soon as you get your phone so that way you can start using it day one and then it will learn those patterns over time. If you've been using your phone for a few months now and you notice that this has been toggled off, toggle it on and then see what happens over time if your battery gets better. If it doesn't, you can always perform a factory reset and then toggle it on once your phone's been reset. Factory resetting your device could also fix any bugs from third-party apps, One UI, or Android itself. These bugs could potentially cause battery drain issues, so if you don't mind going through the setup process over again, this could be a good fix. To go along with factory resetting your device, another tip for you is to make sure that your software is up to date. Typically, you'll receive a notification whenever there's a software update available, but sometimes that notification doesn't actually get pushed for days to weeks later. So it's a good idea to go into your settings, then go under software and make sure there's no updates available. Another option, if you don't want to go through a full factory reset, is to clear your system cache. A lot of the times, this could actually have a major impact on getting better battery life, or at the very least, improve your system performance. So let me show you how to do it. What you're gonna do is power down your phone. So either hold down the power button and select power off, or hold down the volume down button and the power button and then select power off. It just depends on how you have your phone set up. So go ahead and let it power all the way down. Give it a few seconds to make sure that it's powered all the way down. I felt the vibrate. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hold the power button and the volume up button. So just like this, wait for the logo to appear and then release. And this is gonna put it in safe mode. So give it a minute and we should see the menu pop up here. So you have this menu right here. Now I'm gonna use the volume down button to toggle all the way down to wipe cache partition. You can see it's highlighted. Now I'm gonna hit the power button, toggle down to yes, hit the power button. It just wiped the cache and now I'm going to reboot the system and that's it. This next tip might sound like a no brainer, but it's to make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi as much as possible. This will ensure that you're not constantly overworking the battery, pulling down data using your cellular antenna, and instead you're relying on the Wi-Fi connection, which is a little bit more efficient versus cellular. The next tip that I have for you is to make sure adaptive brightness is turned on. And this is for two reasons. The first of which is great for battery life. 
it's gonna automatically adjust the brightness on your display. So if you're in a lower lit area or a dim room, it will go to a very low setting, but you'll still be able to make out all of the content on your display. And in return, it's gonna save some battery life. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, if you're outside under direct sunlight and it's super bright outside, it's going to ramp up the brightness on your display up to its peak brightness, which is around 1700 nits. But this is great considering you're gonna be able to make out everything on your display, even in harsh situations. The next tip that I have for you is to adjust your app notifications based upon the apps that you use the most. So for instance, I do use Facebook, but I don't use it that often. And I really don't care about receiving notifications from Facebook since I can just go into the app and view them that way. So what I can do is I can go into my settings and then I can go under apps and then locate Facebook. So I'll go all the way down here, tap Facebook and where it says notifications, I can tap on that and I can either deliver them quietly or just turn them off. If I turn them off, that's less data that has to get pulled down by Facebook in the background. And that's gonna help save battery, especially if I do this for multiple apps, all of that is going to add up. The next thing that I recommend you do is to adjust your screen timeout settings. You can do that by going into your main settings, going under display, and then adjusting the screen timeout options here. Now, 30 seconds is probably a good sweet spot. I think that's gonna be plenty for most people. I typically keep mine on two minutes, but that's only because I never forget to lock my phone. Every time I'm done using it, I always hit the power button. Um, if you want even better battery life, you could do 15 seconds. If you want a good or sweet combination, you can do 15 seconds and then combine that with keeping the screen on while you're looking at it. This setting can be found under advanced features, under motions and gestures, and then toggle on keep screen on while viewing. Now you don't wanna use this feature if you plan on having a screen timeout setting of more than 30 seconds, simply because this utilizes the front facing camera. So now you're using the display and the camera at the same time, which could cause more battery drain. But I would say with a screen timeout setting of 15 seconds combined with the keep screen on while viewing should be fine. And I think that's actually a really cool combo. This next tip that I have for you is a big one, and it could help you out a ton when it comes to battery drain issues and even performance. A lot of people don't realize that GOS or game optimization services is constantly running in the background, causing battery drain, overheating, and even performance issues. Luckily, Samsung pushed out an update recently that allows you to toggle this off. What you're gonna do is go into Game Launcher, tap on More, go under Game Booster, scroll down, go under Labs, and toggle on Alternate Game Performance Management. This will replace GOS giving you better performance and improving battery life. So there you go. That was 22 ways to get better battery life out of your Galaxy S22 Ultra. Hopefully these tips and tricks were helpful. If they were, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. If you have anything to add to this video, such as your own tips or tricks, comment down below. If you guys aren't subscribed, go ahead and do that so you don't miss future content just like this. And I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.